everyone, and welcome back to Feature Highlights on Pipso TV channel. I am your host, Sinisha, and in today's episode, we're going to touch upon WooCommerce. We are also going to extend this uh, video with part two, where we're going to discuss product vendors. And finally, in a part three, Dotan integration will be on our plate. For now, let's discuss a WooCommerce. WooCommerce is one of the most popular plugins you can download today in the WordPress repository. It has over 5 million installations, and if you used WordPress, you probably know what WooCommerce is. It simply allows you to create a web shop on your website, and in turn allows for selling up all of those products that you want to sell. So, how do you set a Pipso integration with it? Let's dive straight into it. As it is the case with all Pipso integrations, WooCommerce is not any different, and it requires a free version of WooCommerce to be installed on your website first. You can confirm that you have WooCommerce installed by simply seeing this WooCommerce products analytics and marketing menus in the sidebar of your admin dashboard, or you can go to plugins, install plugins, and make sure that WooCommerce is installed. If it's not installed, go to plugins, add new, and look for WooCommerce. It will appear here in result. Download the plugin, install it now, and make sure it is activated. Once you do that for the first time on your website, a wizard similar to what you're seeing here right now is going to be presented to you, where you will need to add store details, products, setup payments, and so on. You can find a very easy guides on the WooCommerce.com website and then go into resources and guides that will show you how to set up a WooCommerce for new store owners. So I strongly encourage you to go through all of these documentation pages and see how to set up the store on your website. Once you're done that and you have your store active and running on your website, it will look similarly to this. Go back to the WordPress dashboard, then Pipso installer. Wait for the installer to check your license. And once it does, Scroll down until you find WooCommerce, Dotan, and Product Vendors Integration Plugin. Download it and activate that plugin. Now that we have WooCommerce and respective Pipso Integration Plugin installed, let's add the cart to our menu over here. To do that, Go to the Appearance Widgets. Find the header chart position. Expand it. Click on a plus button over here and search for the chart widget. Add that widget. You can hide it if chart is empty or change the style, but I'm going to keep it default and update the widget settings. Now, when I go back to the website and open any page, a new cart icon is showing up here. And I show you why is that useful right now. If you go to the shop, open any item and add it to the cart, or you simply go and browse the products from your, from your shop, and add them to the cart. They will all be showing here with a blue icon over the cart, simply saying that there are, there are items in it. 
you can open it and you can go to the checkout from here or you can view the chart. And naturally proceed to check out if you wish to buy all of those items. So cart over here is very useful and it is simple as showing the widget in appropriate widget position. Let's go back to the admin dashboard, Pipso configuration, and you will see this new tab for WooCommerce options. These options are divided into two panels. First is profile tabs and the second is shopping activity. What this tells us is we can show some additional tabs in the profile and also have the shopping activity show up. Let's first disable all of these options so we can discuss them one by one. What are the profile tabs? If you go to any profile on your website, you will see this stream about followers, friends, groups, photos, and so on tabs, which are simply referred to as profile tabs. Every user has them. And you can easily see the followers of this user or friends or groups. Likewise, you can uh, do the same on your profile and see all the videos that you have posted, all the, all the images or groups that you are a member of. Those are the profile tabs. So let's enable the orders and cart. However, I am going to call them my orders and my cart. Save the settings, refresh the profile page, and you will now see that I have my orders and my cart. Now, why did I rename them? Because if you go to any other profile, you won't be able to see those tabs because it makes absolutely no sense for anyone to see your orders and your cart, right? Why would any of these users want to see what are you ordering right now? and what is in your cart. With that said, let's see how these tabs operate. If I go to the shop and let's add few items to the cart, I can go back to my profile, see my cart, and now all of these products that I added in my cart will be displayed here. I can remove some of them from the cart right under my profile and I can also check out the purchase and place order directly from my profile. And when I do that, if I go back to the profile and now visit my orders tab, I can see the new order right over here. I can track the order, or if you sell the digital products on your web shop, you can download your purchases right from your profile. So that's profile tabs. You can enable or disable them, and if you wish, you can also give them the name. They will only show for your own profile and you won't be able to see them for any other profile right now let's check the shopping activity automatic stream post when someone orders or reviews a product let's enable them both and see what options do we have here so whenever someone buys something on your website you can enable the option for new stream to show up saying that this particular user purchases, purchases something from your website. You can rename it or change the action te text for the stream right in the options and you can allow users to override these settings. 
So let's focus on orders or reviews options and individual, individual options for users to override those settings. For them to do that, they need to go to, the, to their own, pro, own profile, switch to About tab, and then in Preferences, there will be a new option for the shopping activity to share my new purchases to my feed and share my new reviews to the feed. If I want to disable all of that, just flip the switch and both will be disabled as easy as that. Okay, now that we know how to, how to do that on the user level, if we disable these options, let's say I don't want to allow users to disable this option, I want all of their shopping activities to show up on the stream, let's just disable this one and see what happens on the profile. Now, when I refresh the page, go to, go to About tab, Preferences. Now, I will only have the option to share my new reviews to my feed, right? So, let's enable this back and save the settings. Let's check how all of these options will behave on the front end. Go to Shop. Let's buy this beanie really quickly. View cart, yes, check out, place order, please. And then go to community to see that new activity stream item is added saying that Frank Westwood have made a purchase. I can change this made a purchase action test text to, let's say, have bought. And now when I refresh the page, you will see it is reflected right here. Likewise, I can also buy multiple products. So let's quickly check out multiple products. Place the order and check the community stream to see that we have the similar design but there is a neat slideshow showing every item that Frank has bought. The similar activity stream will be shown for reviews. So if you open any product, you will be able to make a review. So let's say this is an awesome product. Give it a rating and submit a review. Now, when you go to the community, a new stream will be created showing what you have wrote, showing your rating, and showing the product. Similarly to the stream for purchases, you can also change the action text here in the settings, and naturally it will be reflected on the activity stream once you refresh the page. And that is all for this first part of the three-part series regarding WooCommerce, product vendors, and Docker integration. In the next episode, I'm going to show you how to set up a paid plugin called Product Vendors, which will turn your users into vendors, allowing them to sell products on your webshop. Until then, don't forget to follow us on social media. Links will be in the description below. If you like this video, give it a like and subscribe to our channel. Hit that bell notification icon to be notified whenever a new video comes out. And until then, I wish you all the best with your website. Bye!